Okay. So, um, the message is about Africans and black people deconscientizing um, our minds from the white supremacist, uh, you know, kind of uh, notion and, you know, the, the you know, self-hate um, kind of, you know, um, thing that we Africans have developed towards each other. You know, right from childhood to adulthood, we have been made to kind of accept the fact that Everything African is not good enough. And I keep saying this. It's not even about not good enough. Everything African is bad. This has been done through religion. This has been done through our educational system. This has been done through the movies, through the things we see, the, the news. And, you know, we as Africans are the only ones who can deconstruct these negativity. We are the only ones who can change the narrative and tell our own stories and tell outsiders or ourselves who we are and what we represent. So today in specific, I'm going to talk about self-hate and what self-hate is doing to bring us further down and to destabilize the reality or the possibility that the African can wake up and own his or her place on the global stage. So you know what, when you are told that you are not good enough, you know, okay, let's use the concept of advertising. Sometimes you watch these uh, adverts on TV and then um, you 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 come to like the product even if you don't even like it you you get the the sense of oh wow I like I like that advertisement let me just go and try it up and then you go and get the product and try it out and you know experience it and then you can make a decision to stick with it and even if you haven't made up the decision the fact that you see it every day the fact that you told it that it's good every day, you may end up coming to the conclusion that it's good, even if it's not. That is the mind, the trick of the mind, like the 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 way that the way the mind is controlled is to show it something constantly every day and tell the mind what it should do with what you are you are, you know showing it or the information you're feeding it so from childhood or from since time immemorial as i can remember um we grew up with our mothers telling us to go to church every day and you go to church and the first time look let me tell you you know religion is is another weapon of slavery when the slave masters came oh, well no the when the not slave masters um when the colonizer when the colonizer came they came to study us they couldn't believe of a culture that was so strong people with religion that they absolutely believed in and it worked for them people so wealthy in Africa so they came to a conclusion after studying Africans for a while and say and said that if we break their religion and their culture then we can have them we can enslave them because we were sitting on wealth on gold all these material things that they wanted so that's exactly what they did they brought the Bible to us and told us our religion was not good enough that our ancestral worship was demonic uh, the religion that connected us to nature was demonic perverse um, and then what did we do we just threw everything away 
why did Africans so quickly embrace Western, you know, uh, uh, religion? Because there were aspects of our religion, our, our traditional religion that needed to be changed. For example, blood sacrifice. People had had it up to their neck with blood sacrifice and all the demands that comes with it. People were tired of it. So when they were given an alternative that was seemed like peaceful and loving, they took it. They took it in. And since then, the good side of our religion and the bad side of our religion um, were all cast away altogether. The sad truth is we don't even understand the religion of the colonizer that much. We don't even they took away our languages, they divided us and, and conquered us. So now, what do we have? What do we have? We have just each other. And we need to stand up, we need to rise up. When we, we, we get the opportunity to get educated, we need to use that education to educate fellow Africans. We need to go back, Sankofa, Sankofa. S-A-N-K-O-F-A, -A, Sankofa, you have to research that word. It is okay to go back to what it worked for you and what was good. So I was talking about, you know, the need to deconscientize our minds from self-hate. And what I'll, uh, what I'll put in, in, in a summary is that from 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 childhood you've been told about this white jesus who is the savior and everything else that happened in the world all the inventions that were made by white people so right now like that's where you start when i when i started going to church and I, the first time i was so disappointed in who i was and so felt neglect rejected even by that religion that i was subscribing to was when i was told that we black people are Gentiles. We are not even part of the Abrahamic promise and we are outcast. We're not supposed to be part of salvation. But for the death of Christ. And this Christ Savior, this white um, Christ Savior, I needed to let go of everything about me, everything I know about my ancestors, about my nature, about who I am, and accept his way of life. And it is the only way that I can have salvation after I'm dead and gone. So the white man knows for a fact that heaven is somewhere full of gold and all this splendor. And they came to Africa and they gave that knowledge to us. The knowledge that can supposedly be accessed only when we die. They gave us that knowledge. And what did they do? They took the gold the material wealth that we were sitting on and told us not to count our riches here. We should count our riches when we die. And the simple-minded African decided yes. We must wake up from that slumber. Heaven and hell, they're here on this earth. But we are truly perished if we do not link back to nature. We are a people of nature. We are a people of promise. We are spirit beings. So we need to look for our source, our root. That is not the way of the white man. That is not the way 
of some religion we don't even know. Something that is not in our DNA. That's something that's not part of us. I need you to be very objective in what I'm saying. I'm not pulling down anybody's religion. I'm just telling you that this religion, alien religion that we have, you know, accepted as part of us, that is a tool for colonization. Imagine all these churches, Methodist, Presbyterian, Anglican, Catholic. Every Sunday we go to church, we sing praises of hymns and we worship and all of that. And then we give the money from every locality. And the money goes from every locality to every municipality. The money from every municipality transferred to the money of every national, you know, nation. And then the money from every nation is collected and sent to the continental level. And the continental level is collected and sent to where? You have to really look at it. We need to deconstruct our mind from this mindset that why are we so eager to know about what happens when we die? How about living in the now, here, on, 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 on earth? As I said, I'm not here to try and fight anybody's religion. I am here to tell a sister, a brother, to rise up and think, think. Because part of the awakening is analysis and research. You need to research into who you are. You need to think about our future, where we are headed. Because without personal self-identity, we will be where they exactly wanted us to be, at the bottom of the pyramid, at the bottom of the full chain. Do not allow these systems to pull us down and keep us there. We must break the chains and we must rise up. We must reconnect with nature. We must, you know, defend our children. We must rise up to negative policies that keeps us in poverty. But that's another topic. Once again, this is your servant, Lily Ejewa Ewa. This is the Woke Africa Show. And please leave your comments in the comment section and tell me what you think about this. Because this is a conversation, it's not a one-way, uh, you know, thing. You can leave your, com your comments there and I'll get back to you. My heart bleeds for Africa because we are still in slumber. We are still sleeping. Another point... I believe that at a point we must wake up. I wish you a fantastic week. And, you know, let's keep talking. Let's keep rising up. I'll bring you more in my next episode. It will be on the same topic because we need to discuss this. Have a wonderful day.